Hey, Joseph here with the Precious Plastic team, and I'm going to go through some questions that we got as a follow-up to our Common Stack Prize nomination. So how committed are we to see through the deployment uh, of the Commons? And we are very, very excited for this project and this collaboration with the Common Stack, and we will be fully uh, dedicated throughout the whole period of, of doing this process. We have a core team of around six people that are working on Precious Plastic every day. We also have a community DAO working group that we started on our Discord about uh, a few months ago. We've been discussing what, is it, what would it look like at Precious Plastic DAO and a token for the Precious Plastic e e ecosystem. And then we also have, of course, the Precious Plastic community that we can tap into in terms of uh, people helping out and resources, etc. And we have really a big community of makers, engineers, builders, designers, uh, artists, educators, all people that would be really, really uh, useful and up for helping out with this project. Um, but however, the one thing that we're kind of missing is what the common stack has to offer in terms of your expertise of Web3 uh, infrastructure, as well as your understanding of commons-based projects. And us as a commons uh, at Precious Plastic, you know, it's kind of an obvious choice to go with the common stack for our uh, entry into Web3. There's not a lot of other projects that have the understanding and the expertise that you guys do. So that's why we are so excited about this process. And something you should know is that Precious Plastic has really developed uh, through these different versions throughout the years. It started with the version one all the way back in 2012, uh, where it was just our founder as part of his graduation project, made these small scale plastic recycling machines, open sourced them, put them online. Uh, but then every few years, we would make a new version that would uh, really change the story around the project. It would evolve the machines, the product designs, the techniques that we use to make products, the software, adding some software platforms. Each year, we added something more and got a group together to really build out the next version, then release it. The last version we did was in uh, 2020, Precious Plastic version 4. Um, that's actually where I got involved, and it was part of a initiative where we brought 100 people together from around the world to come work in a warehouse in the Netherlands and really bust out this new version of Fresh Plastic. And now we are, that was released yeah, two years ago, and now we are really thinking about, okay, Precious Plastic version 5, we're ready, what makes sense? And the thing we've been thinking about is how do we exit to community? We built this big commons up over the last 10 years. We built this big community up how do we transition to giving more governance power over these commons so that they can be ma maintained and developed even further so we can scale up for impact? So that would be in 2023. So it really aligns with Common Stack's goal of nine months plus, give or take. And we would imagine version five looking something similar to version four, where we had all these people from around the world come to work on the project. Here's a picture of that moment uh, around 2020 when we released this. These are just some of the faces that worked on the project. And yeah, we would imagine something similar. We're gonna make a call to our community. Hey, let's do Precious Plastic version five. It's gonna be about building this DAO, building this uh, exit to community, and yeah, bring, bring about, bringing together the necessary components to, to get it done. Is there anything about TEC deployment that stands out to you? Um, so obviously TEC was the first uh, deployment of Common Stack's methodology, and I think we're happy with it, how it seems to have gone so far. We have a few um, members in our DAO working group on our Discord that are members of the TEC. That's actually how we got connected with Common Stack. And from our understanding, the, the cultural build uh, went very, pretty well in terms of you know, really having a community-led initiative going through a advice process uh, while leveraging the expertise of experts. And on the technical side, two things really stand out to us. It's that it seemed to have worked well for TEC, the, the bonding curve, the augmented bonding curve, and the conviction voting mechanisms on um, gardens. Those are two things that we're really, really excited about uh, for uh, the Precious Plastics deployment. And when we think about this, this ABC in the terms of Precious Plastic, uh, I just want to go through briefly about how we're thinking about it. So first of all, we have an existing set of common resources at Precious Plastic, so assets that are part of our commons. And so we have, at the base layer, we have this open source intellectual property. We have these machine blueprints and diagrams, CAD models. 
We have open source business models that people can use, learning resources. We have um, yeah, a bunch of stuff around how to start a plastic recycling business. So that's kind of the base layer. And then we also have a software layer where people are interacting with this intellectual property. So it's yeah, a map for people to put uh, uh, a pin saying, I'm here, I'm working on precious plastic. Uh, how to's where different um, crowdsource techniques of making a new product or making a new machine events, an academy. Then we also have a marketplace, a bazaar, we call it, where people can buy and sell the different uh, precious plastic machines, parts, anything related to plastic recycling, so shredded plastic, um, bricks and beams to make new products, etc. And this forms our sort of common resource uh, asset set. And with the ABC, we would imagine it working where like the ABC is forming the cell wall around our community. So when new users are coming, wanting to want, want to use these common resources, they are coming through the ABC. And uh, you know, a portion of the funds go to the reserve pool, another portion goes to the community fund. And to be able to use these funds, there would be make, they would be making proposals um, to the community fund, and that would go back into uh, operating, maintaining, and developing these common resource assets. So for example, someone in the community, or a few people in the community might get together and say, hey, we really need to develop this new injection machine. Here's the plan, this is the budget, uh, and then, hey, community, can we do this? So the community approves this proposal, this machine, after it's developed, it then goes into the open source intellectual property bank, um, you know, our GitHub basically, and then that makes the common resource resources set of precious plastic more valuable. Um, and that means more people are gonna wanna come into the community, get started and start using these machines. So it's that's the continuous funding mo model that we find so interesting about the, the ABC. That's how we would see it working, our community putting forth proposals that's gonna make precious plastic more valuable, that brings more people into the, to, um, to the community. That's how we're gonna solve the plastic waste problem. Secondly, about the um, conviction voting. Uh, so we've been watching on uh, gardens, the TEC deployment, and it seems to be working pretty well. We like the uh, design mechanisms of conviction voting uh, because we also understand the, the downsides of traditional like token voting, uh, simple token voting. Uh, you know, whales coming in, really changing decisions, taking a big uh, portion of uh, the decision-making power. And we really like the idea of long-term thinking and people who are willing to invest in certain proposals over a period of time that shows their commitment, uh, shows their conviction to those ideas. So that's why we also like um, conviction voting. Are you familiar with uh, Ostrom's eight principles and are, there already, are they already part of your community's existing practices. So yeah, we are familiar with Eleanor Ostrom and her um, principles. Uh, she was actually a professor at the university where I study public administration. My first year um, in university, like 10 years ago, she spoke to my community, or sorry, spoke to my class that was all about a sustainable community on these eight principles. Uh, I think she passed away a year, just a year or two later. Um, but yeah, there's a, I think these principles are they're very applicable to us. And I think we are missing a lot of them and that's what we need common sex help with designing um, our commons to be more resilient into the future. There are a few of these where we have elements of, but I think this is a great uh, framework for us to build um, and, to, and to develop our token uh, commons infrastructure and our cultural build. So first of all, commons need to have clearly defined boundaries. This is something we have struggled with in our community over the years. Something that has yeah been was unclear for many years. Recently, we've kind of um, addressed it by with with our software platform, our community platform, we call it. So there, there's like a user sign up, and you become a member, um, and then members can also start their own organization as well. So we have kind of addressed this problem. Now we have a more uh, we have a clearly defined boundary: Are you a user on our community platform or not? Um, so, but yeah, and then also the comments must be monitored. We do some monitoring as the core team. Um, however, it's not democratic. It's not um, you know based on the, the communities doesn't have input on that. We do uh, do a monitoring ourselves to try to address bad actors. But this is something that we would like to be bottom up and grassroots. 
Commons will work best when nested within larger networks. So at many, many layers, precious plastic is nested. So we have uh, at the grassroots level, people just using a small element of the precious plastic operating system within their other project. You know, maybe they're just using one small technique or one small machine, but they have a whole other, you know, Fab Lab project or whatever. Um, so we're very much nested at that level. Then above us, you know, there's bigger projects you know, that are also working on the plastic waste problem, maybe in policy design or something like that, that we're also interfacing with. So at many levels, it's kind of intertwined precious plastics impact. Um, yeah, but again, these principles are really good and would be our guiding light on our cultural build. Would there be any reason for your comments to not deploy on the Gnosis chain? I would say no. Um, we very much would leverage common stack expertise in Web3 uh, deployment. And from our, you know, our basic, we're not a Web3 native project, but from our understanding that Gnosis is really a, a leader in the impact uh, arena, the air, impact area, impact DAOs, and that, that shows us that if other projects are looking to this blockchain for um, yeah, scaling impact, then there's a reason for that. So we trust Common Stack to be able to guide us through that process. And we know there would be um, some solid bridging with Ethereum 2.0 once that rolls out. Does your community have stakeholders that are not familiar with Web3 and how would we onboard them? So yes, <clears throat> like I said, we are not a Web3 native project. However, um, one of the great things about Precious Plastic has been our ability to make something that's inaccessible, accessible. So plastic recycling really traditionally looks like this. It, it's large scale, it's complex, it's expensive. It's really something that people, like you don't even really believe that it happens. So. That's one of the innovations that Precious Plastic has, has made. They, we took something that was very complex and simplified it. and made it um, digestible and accessible to the user, to the people. So here's just a picture of our um, <clears throat> one of our machine sets from the last version that we released. You know, it's much simpler, much cleaner, much cheaper, much more accessible. We designed these machines to be um, built around the world using, we, we think about every component to make sure it's available. So that's the sort of design thinking that we would take also to our um, transition to Web3, is how do we take something as currently inaccessible as Web3, and how do we provide, um, apply our design thinking and our communication style, our visual communication, our branding, our communication style to transitioning our community into Web3. We think we could be as successful as we were with plastic recycling as with bringing our community into Web3. So that's what's actually really, really interesting about a non-native um, Web3 project getting into Web3. We can bring this previous expertise we've had into um, making this a really, really successful launch and project. So um, yeah, that sort of ends the, my thoughts uh, going into the second round. Again, we think of this as a per, just a per, 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 perfect, perfect partnership between Precious Plastic and Common Stack. Couldn't um, think of a better one. And we think the opportunity here is really about how, do, how can we really create the world's first impact DAO that's operating with real world impact? Of course, there, there are some other really awesome projects that we love um, in the impact DAO space, but there's not that many, especially not that many that are very successful yet, that are about, that's actually bridge into the physical world. You know, we are building real physical machines. We have a real physical community around the world picking up plastic waste, transforming it into new useful products. This is such an opportunity to use Web3 to scale and really make that a more cohesive and uh, democratic governed commons. And that's what's so interesting, I think, about this uh, idea. And that's why we're so excited about hoping to... Uh, to work with you guys. So that's my thoughts for now. All right, I think I've spoken enough and take care.